This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hi, aloha. I'm Glenn Martinez of Olamana Gardens, and this is my sidekick and farm manager, Natalie Cash, and co-host. And we'd like to thank you for tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii. Oh. Yeah, because we are techie people. We are. Today is going to be about making tea. Yeah? I've had enough um, coffee. I'm going to tea now, <laughs> right? You know? Yes. Yeah. Then that worked until I found out there was more caffeine in tea than there is in coffee. Wow, that didn't work out too oh, good. No. But the tea we're going to make is compost tea. Yes. Right? And so do we have some video or some slides to show today? We sure do. What do you yeah. want to show first? Video. The video. Okay. So we're going a little video introduction into our compost tea. Now this is compost tea that we make for our plants. I don't actually drink it. Even though I tell all the kids that come to the farm, I shampoo with it, and it has done wonders. Before, I was bald-headed, and now, look at that. <laughs> Isn't it looking much better, huh? <laughs> so don't underrate what compost tea can do for you. Okie dokie. So let's show that little video that we have for uh, compost tea. This is your little pump. This pump, the hose attaches to here, and you simply place this down in the water, and this little part slides up. So when you hit the bottom, it goes up. That gives you some room, room to maneuver underneath the, the bucket here and to poke into the bottom of the bucket, okay? There's just one fitting there. There's no glue on this fitting. Doesn't matter, okay? So you're gonna have your hose here. The way it works is the air comes down here and it has a choice. It can go this way or it can go this way. Since this way goes up, it starts pumping. It sucks the water in here on the bottom. This thing goes, drops down. This, when you stick it in, it hits the bottom. You go over and you plug into the bucket and then it goes like this. This assures you'll be taking the water off the bottom. Now, when it goes off the bottom, it's gonna come up here and it's gonna pulsate and shoot out like you saw earlier. This is the little wand I mentioned that you angle this. If it's angled up, well, the water's just gonna come here and it's not gonna pump up. If it's level, it's gonna pump up to a certain amount and then release. If you aim it down just a little bit, you can make it fill the bucket up more, more, and more, okay? If you go down too far, you will fill the bucket all the way up and the water will be coming out on the sides, okay? So it's pretty self-explanatory. It's on a threaded fitting so it won't fall off or anything like that. You can just tighten it up to whatever little tension that you like where it'll stay where you put it, okay? So you just walk over like this and you'll simply put this in your 50 gallon bucket, reach under and poke it up into the five gallon bucket. That's all there is to that. I've got that one on and running. You can hear it pulsating right now. Okay, so what you saw there was just a quick view. It's a 55 gallon drum set on some cinder blocks, okay? And on the top of it, I put a couple of boards across and I put another five gallon bucket. Mm -hmm. Now the secret is inside the five gallon bucket, we go to bakeries where they sell things in metrics. All the strawberry toppings and the lemon fill oh, yes. topping, they come in metric. Fully Turns out they, they, they're about four and a half gallon bucket. Mm -hmm. So the bucket, the, the white bucket that went inside the orange bucket is really only a four and a half gallon bucket. Why is that important? Doesn't stick together. Because, right. Right. Yes. Anybody you ever got two five apart. gallon buckets and try to pull them apart? Uh -huh. That's agony, right? Yeah. So what we do here is in that top bucket, we put in a, we drill lots and lots of holes through it so the air and the water can come through. I put in a $5 Home Depot, Hardware Hawaii yeah. kind of uh, paint strainer paint bucket. Strainer. So they're like two for $5, two for $6. And basically they're a five gallon net strainer, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, you strain the paint through it, you know? Yeah. Not to show how old I am, but I remember when we used to use ladies' pantyhose. Oh. But I don't, don't, I don't know any ladies that don't, 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 don't stretch the five gallon. It takes a big girl, right? But we want to strain the paint, you know, so we don't get lumps to spray up our head. Mm -hmm. In my case, I want to keep all the worm castings inside the net bag. Yeah. So today I brought, just in case Natalie wanted a snack in the middle of the show, some worm casting. And this is it. It looks like coffee grounds. It's fine. It's very, very lightweight, as you see here. Okay? And it smells very clean. No odor? Yes. Huh? We have three Arabian horses, a couple of goats, 200 chickens and ducks. And they're pooping all over the place. We pick up the poop. We feed it to the worms. 
the worms digest it, it comes out odor free and sanitary. Odor free. That's yep. what our no farm lice. is about. Huh? That's what our farm is about. That's about odor yep. free. Yep. In fact is we laugh that sometimes when we go uh and the farm if you uh if you're sitting over in the pavilion and you open up some pokey, the flies are on you. You go over in the barnyard where there are two hundred animals and there are no flies. Yeah. Because there's nothing there to attract it. Right. Isn't that funny? Yeah. You know, it's kind of it. But a lot of people say, so what's the big deal with the compost tea? Well, my inspiration, okay, in this is a guy named Sir Albert Howard out of England. About 1903, 1905, this guy graduates from Cambridge University in England, and they send him off as an agricultural extension agent to a place called Indoor India. Well, I thought it was like indoor, outdoor. Okay. Right? Indoor, outdoor? I said, wow, he said indoor gardening. Wow. No, indoor was I-N-D-O-R. is the name the of a name. community mm -hmm. in India. So they sent him there, and he's very well funded. He's got a 300-acre place, and they have money for tractors and all the modern stuff of the time, right? You know? And he said no. First, he would learn from the Indians what they do. So he went out and studied what they were doing and then went to see how he could improve what they were doing, not just come with his English ways. Because yeah, one thing he quickly great. realized, the local peasant was not going to go out and buy a tractor. Wasn't going to happen. You know? and, and, it, you know. and I believe when people go to learn from people or get more information or teach them, you come back with much more information. That's right, right. And, and my boss, doctor and partner, Dr. Benny Ron, who brought Natalie and I to the Philippines for several trips. And he also brought us to America and Samoa and that and, um, and referred us on to China. You know, he's been a great inspiration in my life. And I thought it was odd when we go to the Philippines and we go to university and we're there to teach. Yeah. And he would get up and say, I'm not here to teach. I'm here to learn. I thought, what an odd <laughs> thing to say, right? But after a couple of trips, now my favorite saying is, we go there to teach and we learn mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Because you learn a lot from the other team. Yeah. You know, what they're doing. That's right? true. Right? And what work. Plus that, we think, we tend to complicate things. And when we go to developing countries and that, they tend to simplify things. Mm -hmm. You know, okay? And so one of the things is, people say, what's with the compost tea? Well, here, because I'm an aquaponic guy. So in aquaponics, we say we feed the fish, the fish eat the food, they poop in the water, they pee in the water, they breathe in the water. All this ammonia is in the water. It's going to poison the water. And anybody with an aquarium knows you've got to change out a third to right. half the water every week and yep. give them new water. Then the saltwater guys come along and they go, wait a minute, we'll put a biofilter on it. Or we'll salt, freshwater guys and saltwater, they'll put an under gravel filter. Oh, yes. and the fish poop mm -hmm. gets sucked down in the gravel, mm -hmm. the bacteria decomposes it, and it's a nice balance, right? Mm -hmm. And it increases how many fish you can have in a tank, right? Mm -hmm. So as before, they used to say one inch per gallon. So if you had 50 gallon fish tank, you'd have 50 little fishes or 10 larger fishes, et cetera. And so there was a ratio. But all they were doing is getting rid of the fish poop, right? Yes. I mean, they just want to get rid of the poison, mm -hmm. right? Mostly ammonia. Well, aquaponic guys come along. They take the fish water and it turns the ammonia into nitrite, nitrate. then to nitrate. Yep. And that's a form of nitrogen the plants can eat. So we love to grow leafy green things. Think lettuce and bok choy and all the, the herbs and spices and that do great very nitrogen rich like tomatoes and that or for our cash customer marijuana boy mm -hmm. the, the fish water does fantastic but it's kind of like living on chocolate it will it will hold you over to a meal it'll give you yeah. some quick energy but it's not really a complete meal so what we do here is we say we do the compost tea not for the nitrogen we're getting that from the fish water okay mm -hmm. We're doing it for all the trace elements, right? Yes, that's you know, true. The, the zinc, the iron, et cetera. Yep. So we're in our ninth year without mm -hmm. buying any chemicals. That's right. We don't buy any herbicide, insecticides, or pesticide. Think side means to kill. That's skull and crossbone, side. It's a killer. So we don't buy any killing stuff. But we also, we don't buy chelated iron. I think the first year we fooled around when with some. When we first started aquaponics yep. and the plants were looking yep. so anemic, it yep. was like, 
The plants were yellow. And then they say, oh, they need iron. You need chelated iron. What's chelated iron? Well, that's iron that will actually dissolve in water. Well, then everything rests in water. Yeah, but chelated iron much faster in that. Then they say, don't put too much, you'll shock the plant. <laughs> then they say, oh, you got to add potassium because yeah. the fish food has no po pa potassium or phosphate. Yeah. So you got to add that. So then we are certified organic, right? Yeah. Full on certified organic. So we go down to buy potassium and it was $85 a pound yeah. and I needed 20 pounds. And I went, wow, well, I'm, I'm a little paquet for that. I, yeah. I, I just, <laughs> wow, $80, $85 a pound for certified organic potassium. Okay? That was an eye opener. That was it. So we said, well, what are the other ways of doing it? And they said, well, you could go down to Waimanalo Feed Store, you know, or the aquaponics place, and you could buy oyster shells. Take the oyster shells, throw the oyster shells in the water. If the mm. pH is below 7.0, they'll naturally dissolve and bring the water up to 7.0, which is neutral in the pH scale of 0 to 14. 7 is neutral. It will come up to 7, and that's it. They'll just sit there until mm -hmm. they're needed. Mm -hmm. So that was a way to be certified organic, not pay $85 a pound for some foo-foo yeah. chemical to throw in the water, right? Yeah. And, that. and so we got away from it. But then they said, oh, you need the chelated iron. Oh, you need zinc. You need this. Mm -hmm. And people were buying sea kelp. And everybody I talked to was buying stuff. And yeah. I thought to myself, buy chemicals or buy beer? <laughs> yeah, well, I went for the beer, right? Yeah. I thought the beer was more natural, but right? But you came up with a tea maker, Glenn. So we did a tea maker. We did a 55-gallon tea maker with a 5-gallon bucket mm -hmm. on top of it, okay? Yeah. Do we have some sli other slides to show? Yeah, so what, what we're going to do here is show you guys how we grow our compost. Grow the compost. Grow the okay. compost. Okay. So, so we can start... Oh. This is our worm bin. <laughs> now this is a worm bin, and it was made in Australia, and they won awards for it. They made everything out of recycling material. It's round, and it has holes in each layer. So you put the worms in the bottom layer, and you yeah. feed, feed, feed. Then you put the second yeah. layer, you feed, feed, feed. You get to the third layer, you just keep adding your garbage and adding your garbage. And you see all the little worms in there, those little purple stripes in there? Those are Indian blues, okay? They eat it up. No odors, no smells, no flies. Just to let people know, this is actually food being yeah. turned over by the yeah. worms. That's 100% food going yes. to become dirt, yes. right? Like the bag of dirt mm -hmm. I have here, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have people come to our farm. We have two things we do. One is our animal, you know, the zoom do, you might say, yeah. from all the animals that goes to. The other one is all of our kitchen waste goes on top of it. And it's That's way what they like it the best. Oh, yeah. They like leftover pastries, leftover anything. In fact, the worms like things that are rotten. Yeah. Okay? Now, we specialize in doing worms. We're the largest worm farm in Hawaii, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. We still are. And uh, we sell worms. You know, uh, they're like $40 a pound. People come in, bed run, you pick it up, a whole handful of worms, and you sell it to them. And it's just out of bins like this. Now, some of our bins are 8 foot by 12 foot with yeah. chickens on top, That's right? That's right. You know, yeah. throw the larger commercial bin. But this is a little homeowner bin. And you take a little, if you don't want to stick your hands in there, you got the little fork there, you just stir it up, you keep it moist. Cover it over. You keep them in the dark, yep. and they eat it up. Now, every day, almost every day, we sell 40 to $80 of worms every day at That's the farm, right. day they in, call, day out. And we get a school call. college of what, six to $800 at yep. one crack. You know, for worm, and that's to teach the kids. And basically, you just throw wet newspaper on top, keep them in the dark, and they work 24 hours a day. Yeah, and then you close yeah. it up. And close it up. That's it. So we have these sitting all around our farm, just quick and handy by the kitchen, just right outside the kitchen door. Bingo! There you go. Yeah. And uh, and it works out really well. Right. Yeah. So that's one way okay. of us being able to make the black gold. Yeah. Compost. So we're going to take a little break here. Think Tech of Hawaii will be back in just a moment. Stay tuned. we got some more stuff for you. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness.
I'm Ethan Elm, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science. Well, we go from likable science to likable Glenn. Here you go. Yeah, <laughs> no science here. So we want to go to some other slides we have to show. Mm -hmm. We want to show you our, some of our animals and that on our farm. We're a five-acre farm and that in Waimanalo. So what do we have for slides to show here? Ah, this is a worm tumbler. You're looking straight in the end of it. I dump in five gallons, I flip a switch, and that tumbles about five RPM, and the dirt will fall down, but the worms don't. They go sideways, and it's at an angle. They'll tumble all the way to, to the, the end, end, stick to the lid, and they come out. When they come out and they're pure worms, worms are $10 an ounce. That's $160 a pound, folks, okay? See these bins here? We have schools come out. They want to do a hands-on project, so they tumble our worm cassie. They fill those bins up in about an hour and a half. Thank okay, you. right there. Yep, that's it. See, nice, loamy, rich. You can dig your hand down a foot or two feet into these piles. Uh, they're Never just smell. really great. No smells, no odor, no fly, and it's just crawling with butt. Now this is our tea maker. We make 50 gallons every day. You see the water in the bottom, 55 gallon. We pump it up to the five gallon. That goes up and down every four and a half to five minutes, that five gallon on the top. And that will talk deep, rich brown. And right now it's right there at the bottom, it goes up. So I put four cups of the worm castings in each morning and I run it till the next morning. I walk out, I flip an air switch mm -hmm. and the air pumps it out. So there you see it sitting in the net sack there. Okay, mm -hmm. so it comes up the air and the water from the bottom, and the whole thing will become fluid. You reach in, you can't even grab a handful or anything, and then it all goes down. When it goes down, it catches on the screen, and yeah. up and down, up and down every four and a half to five minutes. Okay, for 24 hours, rich chocolate brown water. Yes. Then we pump that out. Now our yeah, system is two 1,200 gallon tanks. Out. Okay, that's 2,400 gallons of fish water and we add 50 gallons of water a day to make up for the evaporation, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Well, look at these leaves. No yellowed out leaves there. Everything is dark, rich green. Our pineapple, which is normally a two-year crop, we get it in seven months and that. So we have a lot of fun crops. We do a lot of pepper. This is ginger. We do a lot of ginger and turmeric. look very similar is turmeric. This one is turmeric here and that. And the ginger is just whiter. And so you bring it, we grow an aquaponics in the center, strawberries, strawberries are always possible. Even out of season, we're still growing strawberries, mm -hmm. okay? Lucky we live Hawaii, right? Yes. And uh, um, passion lily fruit, fruit, passion yeah. fruit. Passion fruit goes absolutely nuts. Really Keep cool. in mind, the roots are in the water. Taro, that is five taro plants planted about four to six months ago, and now you have about 150 plants in there. Fantastic for propagation. This is a float bed. Yeah, float beds, that deep water beds, right? Grows on plants will grow on water. Right, 100% water. There's no soil in that garden. All. Chayote squash does really great. Now, all these plants have different needs, right? Yeah. So what we do, we throw in the worm tea, and it just satisfies everybody. Kind of a shotgun mm -hmm. approach to nutrition. Here's the beautiful thing is, it doesn't matter if I have too much of something because it will not burn the plant. It's like gotcha. saying you have too much topsoil. There's no such thing. Yep. So we don't have to worry about it with worm tea with that, yep. you know, mm -hmm. on it. So it's good fun. And uh, so we'd like you to see this. This is tarot. These are four by four foot fiberglass beds. The water goes up and down every 15 minutes. Now we're not going to grow this tarot to maturity in there. We now grab it and take it out to the field and you spread it out. Mm -hmm. That's what we're into. This is called the mosquito plant. It's a... Um, uh, water zola. Fern. We yeah. do water zola. It's a fern plant. And what it does, it will blanket the water. We take out half every morning, and the next day it's full. Yeah. Would you like our ATM card? Yeah. You take out half, it's full <laughs> the next day. You like that I want card? one yeah. like that. And so you see here, we just harvested so you can see some water. Tomorrow morning, there'll be no water showing. Yes. It'll be completely solid mm -hmm. across. Okay? And uh, in Africa, it's called a mosquito plant because no mosquitoes. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff, right? That's right. No yeah, I want to share something with you, and that is Travis down at the aquaponic place. 
You know, sometimes something creeps up on you, you don't realize that you got a jewel in your backyard. Mm -hmm. And this is a little store yes. on the backside of Waimanalo Feed Store. Yeah. And Travis bought out um, uh, the fellow there that has. This is it, kind of an open shed area. He has aquaponic system set up. That's his little blue office there, painted wall. But you got different setup. But this is where I buy all my stuff, mm -hmm. okay? And he that, sells complete uh, units. And this is it. He has the fish for sale for like a dollar a piece for babies and that. I sell full-grown ones ready for the restaurant, right? He'll sell you the baby. He's got every kind of tank and that that you can think of that you need and all the trays that we use, yeah. the double trays and that. So I would say that 99% of what we use comes from Aquaponic Place. And he's been a great resource. Uh, Stan Kadama was the owner of Waimanalo yes. Feed Store. His sons are still running that, and he sold off the aquaponic side of it. But the, he's a nice young man. He's knowledgeable. I bring in air pumps that I, I killed them. I bring them in. He sells me the parts for $20, $30, and he actually puts them in for me and doesn't charge me. Yeah. You know, it just, he's you, you know, That's right. I mean, it's he's like pulling in and telling the, the mechanic, I need the oil change. And he said, I'll take care of it. And, just pay him for the oil. He doesn't charge you for labor. Right. Wouldn't that be wonderful, mm -hmm. huh? Uh, but anyway, he's a great guy. I'd like to give him a plug. And plus that, I think he's the only guy on Oahu selling aquaponic supplies. Right. We have a couple of hydroponic stores, one in Sand Island, yeah. one in Kahala, right? But they're strictly they're hydroponics. The they have not really gotten into the aquaponics. But he's a great guy. His prices are very reasonable mm -hmm. on it. Pretty much, I'm willing to buy local as long as it's in, within 10% of what I could buy it on the internet. Because by the time you buy the internet and you ship it, well, you might as well drive down and support your local store. But Travis is really good people, yes, and, and that's important for him. And I have brought him in some motors that are just basket cases, yeah. and leave them, come back and pick them up two days, and you see she owe me $18. I go, wow, it was a $195 pump. And for $18, I mean, he's a that's very nice young it. man. That mm -hmm. he does a great service, but he's extremely patient with people, yes, and he is. brings in things our local hardware stores do not shut yeah. off valves, the filters, different palms, things for the air fish. Palms, water yeah. palms. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any other slides on him? Was that it for well, him? Well, that was it for our that was it? Place, But we don't. I never see our horse area yet. Never see our horse area. You got mm -hmm. our horse slides in there. Uh, Did you have some slides for the horses? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He says Natalie says, "Oh, we have some slides on the horses and the critters." Just wanted this? for people to see how we grow our compost pile out in the right. field. Well, so maybe, maybe our film manager will just pull up those pictures. Here we go. That's the horse stall. Now, you see the bottom there? That is all wood chips. Wood chips. So the, the guys that trim the wood on the side of the road will bring me the wood chips. I put it in. That's two and a half feet deep. Yeah. Okay. And then every day we pick up the fresh manure, but we let it, the rest sit there. They pee in the water, everything. Only every four to six months do I go in my tractor and I dig it out and I put piles of it outside. Yeah. And then the worms just wag it. So you see, I have piles and piles of it. By the way, that pile sells for $2 a pound. We yeah. run it through the tumble, take out the sticks and the brambles and the raw, and it's $2 a pound. How many pounds do you think are piled up there? Well, there have been a lot of pickup trucks that goes yeah. in and out of that yeah. pile. We get a lot of marijuana grows. Legal guys, <laughs> totally legal. They got to show me their certificate. We we don't we don't do the criminal element. And look how but, but look see how, how fine it is. It is beautiful stuff, and people really like it. Um, we have uh, we had a sprouting guy come uh, just yesterday, and he came in and. People are growing sprouts or they're spraying in nurseries mm -hmm. and they inoculate the plant. They spray the worm tea on top of the plant so it sucks in through the leaves yeah. and that and does really well. And Sunset Elementary, Glenn, when we go oh, yeah. there with a truck full of compost and they mm -hmm. put it in their gardens Where's at that? Sunset Oh, Sunset Elementary. Yeah, with yeah well, it's really cool. Bank of Hawaii had employee day, you yeah. know, volunteer day. So we go out there, they must have 30 or 40 Bank of Hawaii employees. Yes, right. We pulled up with a big commercial uh, double crew truck with an mm -hmm. eight-foot bed. We had about $1,000 worth of worm yeah. castings in the bottom. Full to the top. And they took that. It was just brimming to the top. They took that and they put it into their mulch and yep. their raised bed gardening yep. with 30 or 40 people doing it. It was all done by lunchtime, yes. right? When it sprouted, three weeks later, they had governor we out back, there, and it was and just it blown so away. It was like Jurassic Park. It They've was. never had it like Cucumbers, that. Zucchini. So we like, like annually make a donation to them, 
and, and go out there and just give them a little shot in the arm. Yeah. A great community. Sunset Beach. Can you imagine going to school across the street from one of the most beautiful surfing spots in the world? Got to be hard to concentrate. And what better way to teach the kids of where the right. vegetables come right. from? From a little seed to the harvest of yep. the plant, and yep. then you can eat it. Yep, yep. And, and the people out on the North Shore there, Sunset Beach, they're, they're very involved with their children. Yeah. Uh, and that. I see more parents at Sunset School than any other school I've gone to. Mm -hmm. And uh, Natalie and I welcome farm tourists to Olamana Gardens. Uh, mm -hmm. We have Waikiki, Ele Waikiki Elementary School comes out like 80 kids, one crap. Yes. But they also bring out about 20 adults with the yes. parents, right, to help supervise in that. That's the larger group. Most of them, we do a lot of charter schools, anywhere mm -hmm. from 10 to 20 kids. It's only like $10 senior a head. Groups. And we do senior groups. We do donations. We, we do whatever. We, we go all the way down Kamehameha School for preschool kids. Yeah. And I tell you what, if you they want to get the attention of a preschool it. kid, give them a baby duck to hold. Yeah. <laughs> that does it, you know. I get the most jaded person in the world, give them a baby duck, you know. Yeah. But uh, but I held up a little baby duck right in front of my face. Oh, oh you're just so cute. And he pecked me right on the eye. Oh, no. Nobody had warned me, never let a baby duck close to your eyeball. They'll hit you right in the oh, eye. Oh, they're looking at themselves. Oh, I was blind for a week. Oh, that thing just... I could not believe. Put your glasses on. Yeah, man. keep my safety glasses on when I handle them ducks. No more kissing ducks. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, anyway, if you have any question about the worm tea makers, we and our if you go to our webpage, which is www.olamanagardens.com, pretty simple. Olamana Gardens is named after Olamana Mountain over there in Waimanalo. Yeah. So is Olamana Ranch, Olamana yeah. Nursery, or Olamana Garden. It's the land of Olamana. Oh, our Facebook huh? page. Or our, oh, Facebook our Facebook page. Facebook page is Olamana Gardens in Waimanalo. Olamana Gardens in Waimanalo. That's our Facebook page. Yes. Very good. Yeah. And so if you go there, you'll see it. We also we sell little books on how to make these tea makers, like fifty bucks or something like that. And you can do it, or people come out and buy complete tea makers. Our tea makers are out at uh, 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 what is it out on the North Shore, um, mm -hmm. uh, Brigham Young. You know, uh, oh yeah, BYU. At BYU, they have one of our tea makers. Uh, they're Words. over in Kauai, the Big Island. We've Aquapani. shipped them to all the. Island. We've shipped our tea makers all the way to from China, all the way to Africa. Yeah. We put yeah. all everything inside, yeah. screw a lid on it, and, and you ready for this? I boxed the fifty-five gallon drum the first time. Yeah. I went down to Young Brothers, and they said, "Why do you put a drum in a box?" We looked around there, all these drums, and they're just picking them up with forklifts. So you come up, clamp them, pick them up. After that, no more boxing. We just put everything in the drum, yep. and we just put packing in there so it doesn't rattle around too yep. much. But the air pumps, everything, you get everything you need, we yep. ship it to them. Mm -hmm. And so, but it's simple enough. Most farmers will buy one from us and then make the additional mm -hmm. ones. You know? yep. So that's about it. We're coming close to wrap up time. I hope you enjoy it. Uh, here at uh, Think Tech Hawaii, we try to make it interesting, but we also try to educate you. So make yeah. compost tea. You can't go wrong. All the micronutrients and that. And one of the days, I'm going to warm up a cup and try it in the morning just to see what <laughs> happens. But we thank you all a lot for tuning in. Think Tech Hawaii, Natalie Cash, Glenn Martinez. Take care. Aloha. Aloha.